In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make better captions for your drag and drop interactions. I love the drag and drop interaction that was introduced a couple of versions ago in Adobe Captivate. I, I think it's a really great addition to the software and it really gives your users, your, your learners, uh, something uh, much more interesting than to, to do than just answering multiple choice questions or true or false or fill in the blank. So it, it definitely makes it very interactive and it, and it definitely gives a modern uh, quality to your e-learning. But one thing I'm not crazy about is the way that captions work and the especially in uh, Captivate version 8 um, but Captain Captivate version 9, of course, it gives you a little bit greater capability. But uh, what I'm going to show you today, I think, could be probably implemented, um, you know, in, I think, most situations here. Um, I think it would work for 8 and 9. It certainly will work for 9. That's what I'm using today. So I've got the basics of, of a, uh, an interaction set up here. And this is just going to be... Um, you know, a drag and drop. Originally, this was more of a discovery exercise uh, where I was going to have them snap back if they chose the wrong option, but we'll just go with a basic drag and drop for right now. So if you don't already know, to add a drag and drop, you can either use the uh, option from the insert drop down menu and go down and launch drag and drop interaction wizard, or alternatively, you can choose it from the interactions drop down icon from your toolbar here and simply select drag and drop. Creating a drag and drop is a very simple three step process. The first thing you need to do is to indicate to Adobe Captivate what your drag sources are going to be and you just select them like I'm doing right here. You could click on them one by one or just draw a selection box around them or through them. And then click the next option. This is the most simplest form of, um, of a drag and drop. And now, of course, I'm going to select my drop targets in the exact same way. And that's done. And we'll hit next. And uh, throughout the process, a couple of things happen. Um, as you'll, you'll see, of course, the addition of a submit button. It doesn't look like much now, but I'll show you a really cool way in this video how to jazz it up a little bit, especially for uh, standard or blank projects as they're sometimes known. So now the last, the third step of creating my drag and drop is to just simply identify the relationship between the uh, drag source and the drop target. So uh, let me just remind myself here. So this is a, shows another fist, so that's a threatening behavior. Uh, racial slur, that's going to go under harassment. Foul language is verbal abuse. You'll notice that now I have, can't really see much, but there's some captions there created at this point. Um, verbal or written threats is this example here. And this one punches someone in the arm, that's a physical attack. There we go. So we've created our drag and drop interaction. I just hit finish. And the screen goes a little bit wonky for a second, but in the end, you have your completed drag and drop interaction. So the first thing I like to do is to modify this a few different ways. Uh, let's take a look at the drag and drop properties panel. And uh, we'll just start off with the format tab. And I'm going to select the drag sources and I'm going to add the zoom in effect. I, I like that because it gives you the effect that you're lifting something off the page, dragging it over and dropping it someplace. It gives you a visual cue that you're doing something. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to select my drop targets now and go to the, uh, the snap behavior. In this case, these will fit nicely in the bottom portion of this. So I want to make sure that that's where they snap to. So I could actually choose any of the bottom uh, snap positions here. I'm going to choose the bottom middle in this case. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like this is re pretty much ready to go. You can do some things to, to customize it. Now I'm not going to be using these captions. 
I'm going to be creating my own and I'm just going to uncheck the failure and success captions and then I'm just going to slide over to my um, my scrap area here where I've already gone ahead and created some grouped objects and this one here is for the incorrect uh, feedback let's hit the properties panel now they're um, they're the default um, setting for these is not visible in output because uh, when you arrive arrive on this page you don't want to see the captions already but what I've added to them what I've grouped together is some navigation controls as well as a smart shape that's been stylized to fit this particular course now in this case here when you have your drag and drop you're going to have a submit button plus optionally any other buttons that you might choose uh, like a, a reset button for example which I'll, I'll create as well but those will disappear once you've completed the interaction so I'd like them to be replaced with the action I would like the user to perform next and there's a pause on these buttons and there's one for correct correct will also uh, not only give you a back button but it will give you a forward button as well so that you can move forward with the rest of your course um, so this is pretty straightforward it's actually not that complex let's first of all start off by customizing my uh, submit button here you can see it's kind of plain and just basic text let's go to style here your caption literally says submit now one of the things that that I've done is uh, I've started using this font for creating iconography or icons if you will and it's called font awesome you can go to their website at fontawesome.io and uh, and download this font for absolutely free I'm not being paid to endorse this I just think it's a really fantastic way to add some cool fonts to your e-learning different arrows navigation controls popular social media logos things like that pretty much anything that you can imagine and, and actually if you uh, do download it they provide you a PDF file where you can find the particular font that you're looking for kind of get in close there let's see if we can zoom in and all you need to do let's see if we can find a font real quick that would be appropriate for my submit button I've used a check mark before probably the hardest part about using this font is finding it because there's uh, so many different icons to choose from there it is there that's what I've used before so I just highlight it on the PDF and I copy it and uh, return to my Adobe Captivate project and in the caption field we're just gonna paste that in there and it's already using the font awesome font which I have installed already and I'm just gonna change the color of this to a dark black and we'll change the size of the button 60 pixels by 60 pixels I found has worked well and I already know a location on the screen where I want to place it I think that's about right there now let's go back to our drag and drop panel and uh, one thing I'm going to add is I'm going to add a reset button uh, and I'm going to use the same approach here we'll go back to the properties panel and we'll go back to that let's see if we can find the reset I use a, a sort of a recycle icon like I said probably the hardest thing is is finding these it can take a little while but once you have it there so now I can go in select my reset button and just put in the caption the character that's associated with that particular reset there and I'm just gonna even though it's already font awesome I'm just gonna make sure that that is set for font awesome same thing as before I'm just gonna resize the button so it's perfectly square and we're going to position that on the left hand side of the page at about 50 pixels 
So there we go. I mean, this is pretty much good to go. We just need to add uh, a little bit of uh, functionality here. Let's go back over to our, our incorrect item here. We'll bring that. Make sure your captions are the, uh, and that's why I like having my alignment toolbar open. I like to bring those selected objects, in this case the captions, all the way to the top. So there's my incorrect caption. And I'm just going to make the interaction uh, for my drag and drop not visible um, or not shown so that it's just a little less confusing to look at. And I'm just going to select this and try to line it up uh, most, mostly with that button in mind. So I just nudge it with my keyboard controls here. I think that's right there. And uh, same thing for this one here. And to help make that easy, um, one of the things you can do in your uh, timeline is to just make them not visible so you don't have to see so many objects overlapping one another. And we'll just line that up. That looks about right there. And again, we can make that not visible in output. So what I need to do now, so the final thing to make this all work is we need to set up some actions for our drag and drop. So if the user successfully drags over all of these items, typically what you do is have it continue or go to next slide. But what I'm going to do in this case here is show that success caption. And that is called the correct caption. I've called it. And this is where naming your objects is really important. If you're going to uh, do this type of work, you definitely want to make sure that um, you know your objects are well named so that you're showing the right object at the appropriate time. And then, of course, I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project because I want the user to pause on that caption, consider what they need, and then click the button that's appropriate for that particular caption. And on failure, similarly, we're going to show, and we're going to choose the incorrect caption. Also, uncheck continue playing the project. In this case here, we're going to do uh, one attempt, but you could have uh, several attempts and then maybe have some intermediate uh, captions displayed, um, you know, or infinite attempts, if you will. And the idea being is that, you know, the back button for the incorrect would be a remediation type of thing where you take, them, take the user back to where they should have learned this material in the first place and give them an opportunity to review. So that's pretty much set to go. I do like to check off redrag the dropped source to give users an opportunity to not have to reset the whole interaction to move one item from one drop target to another. And that's pretty much set to go. So let's do a preview. We'll get it wrong first and see what that looks like. So we'll do it. Um, well, we could do it uh, from this next five slides, I think is probably fine. Okay, so there's our uh, recognizing behaviors exercise. And um, what I'll do is start off by dragging these objects over. So punching an associate in the arm is obviously a physical attack. Uh, emailing um, uh, threatening statements could be verbal or written threats. Uh, an associate who injects foul language into a conversation is verbal abuse. And racial slurs would be harassment. And I think, um, oh, you know what? I was going to get this wrong. Well, that will do it. And we'll just click, oh, incorrect. Click the back button to review the material again. And presumably that would, uh, would do exactly that for you. Let's try it this time and get it correct. Preview. Next five slides. Okay, so this time let's get it perfect. Uh, punching is physical attacks. Uh, emailing is verbal or written. Oops, there you go. That's why you need to have that redrag option uh, selected. 
uh, foul language, verbal abuse, racial slur is harassment, threatening behavior, the last one there. So I hit submit. And again, watch what happens when, when you have your normal submit and, and uh, reset buttons here. By the way, aren't those awesome? Isn't that great? Fontawesome.io, and you can download that font and use it in your e-learning uh, all you wish. So there's correct. Uh, and now, of course, I've got a back button. If I want to go back and review, that's the user's choice. Uh, keeping in mind, of course, that when they return to this slide, they'll have to redo the exercise. But uh, the next button would allow them to continue with the rest of the project. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.